Hey everyone, welcome to our new unit on area, two-dimensional area that is. This is video 8a and we're going to be talking about areas of parallelograms for this video here. I want to just remind you a little bit um, from our last unit that you remember parallelograms is actually um, a quadrilateral family that has four different types of quadrilaterals in it if you remember and that is a parallelogram a rhombus, a rectangle, and a square. And what I just want to tell you is that it's the exact same formula for all of um, the areas of these four things. And that formula is very simply area equals base times height. What's important to realize though is that the location of this guy right here of the height is going to be expressed differently and and shown differently depending on the type of shape that we're looking at um, location of this changes is what we're going to be talking about so really quickly the most common type of quadrilateral easiest that we've been doing the longest as far as the area goes and I'm just going to cross out this uh, column here where it says term and we're going to write area of instead. So first is going to be square because that's easy enough it's just length times width as we know okay uh, but in the case of a square we know that the side lengths are the same and so base times height actually becomes side times side, so we would say that the area there is just s squared. The next type of shape, if we have a rectangle, very straightforward, it's just base times height. And we know that on that diagram, uh, of course, we have our right angles for a rectangle, and our base is the bottom side, and our height is the height Things change a little bit though when we get to these bottom two shapes as part of this parallelogram quadrilateral family. Um, the next one is rhombus. And while the area is still base times height, the formula to calculate area, um, I just want to write in here that there is going to be another formula that we're going to talk about in a later video. But for now, we're just going to go with base times height. It's just that what we have to realize as we draw our picture here for our rhombus, which is a four-sided parallelogram where all four sides are the same length. Pretend that's what that, that picture shows, sorry. Um, the base is easy enough to calculate and is usually labeled, but the height of the rhombus here has still got to be drawn at a right angle and sometimes it's indicated inside the parallelogram or inside the rhombus and sometimes it's like a drop down on the outside of the parallelogram a little bit so just realize though that the height is not a diagonal which is typically if you're going to see lines drawn in on a rhombus, usually it's a diagonal that we see drawn in. So just be aware that it has to be at a right angle to a side that you are going to be looking for for the height. And then finally, the same thing is true for base times height for a parallelogram. And again, as we look at the diagram there, We need to know that, of course, we have our base along the bottom, but again, be aware that the height is going to be coming down from um, at a right angle to the side, and that's what we're going to be looking for for the height. Now, often this creates a triangle on the ends of the parallelogram that usually uh, might even have certain patterns in that triangle and that's what we're going to see 
in our next example. But as far as the definitions there, really simple. Base times height, base times height, base times height, and even base times height for a square. It's just that those sides are the same. Um, so just pay attention, like we said, to where that location of the height is on each of the diagrams that you're encountering. But every time you have a parallelogram, straightforward base times height. Next slide, we're going to be starting to talk about some examples. Okay, so here are some examples as we start to talk about area of parallelograms. Um, for example, one here, we're told to find the perimeter and the area. Perimeter is going to be really fast, just adding up all four sides. And remember, opposite sides are the same. So we've got two 18 lengths, and we've got two 12 lengths for a total perimeter of 36 plus 24 or 60. And do be aware and watch your units here, okay? You really want to make sure that your units are used appropriately. For perimeter, it's just a length, so single uh, inches is fine. But for area, you want to make sure that you're watching your units to make sure that you're using square units always for area. And that goes for any area problem that we're going to be solving throughout this entire unit. Area is always in whatever those units are squared. Okay, so centimeters could be inches, could be meters, could be feet, but its area is always in square units. So returning to this problem here, if we're looking for the area of this parallelogram, we know we need to fill in base times height. The base is given to us because TR is the same as WV, if we're thinking of base just simply being on the bottom only, um, you need to expand that definition. So we've got 18 for the base, but the height is still um, kind of unknown. So if we look at this triangle that's created by that height that's dropped down from point T there, I hope you can see it's a 30, 60, 90, where our hypotenuse is 12 which means cut that in half for the short leg is 6. So that little piece right there is 6, which means that the long leg is going to be 6 radical 3. And that also long leg is the same as the height. So my height is 6 radical 3. So 18 times 6 radical 3 is going to be my exact area. And notice this is here both straight equal signs, so we are looking for exact. Um, and so that's going to be 108 radical 3. Make sure you have units as inches squared here. And um, if you want an approximation, because sometimes it's helpful to find that, that would be 187.1 if we rounded to the nearest tenth. And again, that's inches squared. Please make sure you're getting those square units in there, okay? For the next example, using parallelograms, this is kind of putting it in the context of a real world here. We've got a floor plan of the Warner's house, and they are planning to re-carpet part of the first floor. What we need to do is figure out how much carpeting is going to cover the living room, the den, and the hall. So I'm going to break up my problem into those three sections, the living room, the den, and the hall, and of course we know we're going to add up all three of those um, calculations to get our total. So if we have area equals base times height for the living room, my living room here is just a rectangle that has a base of 15 and a height of 13. So that's just a quick, quick multiplication, 195 feet squared. For my den, as I'm looking at that on the diagram, that's this green rectangle down here. You can see the dimensions clearly marked again. Area equals base times height, where my base is 15 again. My height this time is only 10. The den's a little bit of a smaller room. And so my total there, when I multiply, is 135, and my units would be, again, feet squared. The hall is a little bit trickier to figure out just because as we're looking for this orange piece right here, we don't really have any dimensions explicitly written on there, so we have to do some thinking through. Um, if I know that the entire length of the house portion of the floor plan that I have here is 35, 
then I've got 15 and 15 taken up, then I hope you can agree that that leaves the base to be 35 minus those two 15s. And so we get 5. And that the height is the same as the height of the living room. Living room. Um, and so the hall's dimensions for area equals base times height are going to be base is 5, height is 13 for a total of 65 for the hall. And so if I take my 195 and my 135 and my 65 and I add all of those up, I'm going to get a total of 395 feet squared. And just be aware that sometimes your carpeting might be sold um, instead of by the square foot, maybe by something else like the square yard. So you'll see a conversion done in your uh, book that takes this number 395 and converts it to square yards. And if you think about it, a yard being actually three feet on each side, then a square yard, hopefully you can see, is going to be nine square feet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if we count up the little squares there. So to convert, I'm going to take 395 feet squared, and I'm going to multiply it by a yard squared over, sorry, yard squared over uh, nine feet squared. And roughly, I'm going to have 43.9 yards squared. So that's what we're looking at for that real-world application problem. Make sure you go on and do the on-your-own problems for this section. And since you have another video tonight for homework, also for 8B as well. So we're working through the first two yellow pages. Um, and we'll get to the next video which is talking about triangles, trapezoids, and areas of rhombuses and kites in a different way than we did them this time around. All right, see you guys tomorrow.